over and over again, my friend, that you don't believe we're on the eve of destruction. Barry McGuire, of course, there on the radio. I am Steve Floyd, the man with a face made for radio, and your designated monkey today. Here, basically, to run the board and make sure that the message gets out for the wake-up call here. It's Far North Tactical's wake-up call from Far North Tactical this morning. Aaron Bennett, good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Steve. And from the other sponsor, uh, the uh, sponsor is not really the right word because this is a paid program, kind of like uh, listening to an infomercial or something. Except you guys don't, <laughs> you don't pump your product at the end. The only product here is Liberty. We don't have uh, much info. <laughs> The other the other person here in the studio, of course, is Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. All right. All right. Where'd those hooligans go? I don't know. There are a couple of uh, teenage boys here in the environs. Perhaps they're out figuring out some way to... Uh, Sounds like we should make some regulations. <clears throat> well, they, they're, uh, you're telling me, basically, that those boys are off unsupervised in a radio station that's full of millions of dollars of equipment... And uh, you know what? For some reason, I'm not worried. I, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that my son is going to go out there and do something really stupid, and I don't believe that your son is either. And why is that? We could still go to jail for it, unsupervised child activity. You know, I, have, I hear that. A couple of people got arrested in the last, uh, just in the last week, didn't they? Because they let their kids go out and play outside in their yard, <laughs> in their own backyard. Oh. No. I, th- I think it was their front yard. That was the problem, is that well, they were the first, out there yeah. by near the street. They were actually outside Why without not? having somebody watching every moment of one. No, one mom was arrested because her kid was climbing a tree. Her kid was climbing a tree in her backyard. Oh, I can see that. Oh yeah, it's obviously allowing that dangerous activity to happen. Well, the only way the, that that could happen is because the state claims ownership over human life itself, right? No. No, they don't. Oh, yes, they do. <laughs> uh, I don't know about you guys, but I am so stinking happy that the borough elections are over. And I can actually listen to the radio without hearing their stupid ads the whole time. You know, no one makes any good ads. We were like the only people when we ran for office. We were the only ones that made ads that sounded cool. Everyone else... They kind of suck. Well, we were having fun. <laughs> yeah, we it's totally were having different. Fun. <laughs> well, I, I mean, if you think about it, though, most of the people that are that are that make the ads, most of the people that run for office, they're basically running on the same platform they ran on when they were in student government back in the public high schools years ago. Vote for me, because I'm the prettiest. Vote for me. Hey, you should well, vote. Well, if that was true, I, then I would have got elected. Because uh, I am no, prettier than anyone actually, else in this town. <laughs> actually, it, that really, if it is true, and obviously it is, that is the reason why you've lost. Because you, my friend, are one, mm, well, let me just say that you, I do not have a man crush I on you. I think the word you're looking for is sexy beast. Uh, I don't. <laughs> Another face made for radio. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, I'm not on TV, that's for sure. Isn't it? Isn't it true, though, that pretty much all elections just come down to popularity contests? Mm-hmm. I mean, if you, if you think about it, most of the people are not really truly informed on the issues. Not Most of the people, if you ask them, well, well, can you tell me where the candidates stand? Most people don't. I mean, they'll they'll vote out of self-interest. They'll vote because of, of the money that they might get from one candidate or another, the jobs that might be, quote, created, unquote. Who they're told to vote for no. by various employment agencies, <laughs> so-called. Associations. What Those are free associations. That's uh, everybody should have the right to join a union, Josh. Oh no, they do, they should, as long as they're not government unions. Um, I dang see, it. I, I see just, the gears turning. I looked at that building over there and went blank again. Dang it! We've got to get some curtains. It has the effect on a lot of people, <laughs> especially when <laughs> they get elected and they actually enter property. into the building. That's when they really go blank. And just regardless of whatever per platform they may have run on in terms of, I want to cut borough spending. The second they get into that building, all of a sudden it's, oh, we can't cut these pro These are vital services. What would we do if we didn't have flowers that were being watered and tended to by borough employees at the expense of the uh, the homeowners here in Fairbanks? Put a few pennies back in our bank account. No, 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 no. no. You see, because that's that's where you're wrong. It's not really your bank account. The reason why... Any of us exist here is basically like good serfs to provide an income flow for the nobles. It hasn't been 
It was pretty fun listening to the commercials because they're the same, like you said, the same thing they said in there in high school. Running for, uh, I don't even know what they were because I didn't go to high school. But the uh, their do. main themes are always, you know, I get things done and vote for me because I'll work for you. I work hard. I'm a... Uh, I work good with other kids. I play good in the playground, those kind of things. All of them are the same. Every single one. And you know that some of them are Democrats. They're personal leaning. And some of their personal leanings are uh, uh, Republicans. But when you listen to their ads, you couldn't tell what they actually believe as far as government's concerned or as the people are concerned. Because they both say the exact same thing. It was funny when Aaron and I ran for borough. What was that? Uh, what's the gal's name from the ITA? ITA? Donna Gilbert? Yeah. She said on, uh, I think it was Michael Duke's radio show, she she had two hours of it one time herself. She ran the show. And she was complaining about us, which is fine. And she said, well, one thing i got to say is those two boys, you know, ugh. Probably know more. I mean, I've never met anyone that knew more about the Constitution than those two boys, blah, blah, blah. She actually admitted that. But I'll never vote for them. Which I thought was fantastic. So here we have people. You know, if you go on, on the street and ask your regular Joe Blow, they'll say something about how the Constitution is important or whatever. So this gal said that we knew more about the Constitution than anyone she ever met. We could argue it better than anyone. But she would never vote for us. I think that's hilarious. When it really comes down to it, it's like what you said. What do people want? They're voting on what they're going to get. What candy box you have that you're going to spread out to everyone. And no one ever has. No one ever thinks about the candy that they're taking. Well, maybe they do. Maybe, maybe just people don't care. They don't think about the candy they're taking was paid by someone. You paid for the candy. I paid for the candy. But the distribution of the candy is way off. I, I know a person. Well, no, I don't know them personally. A friend of mine told me of a person the other day. He had two wood stoves. One wood stove was an old piece of junk in the back of their house. It was hooked up, though. But they never used it. They didn't need it. It was just sitting there. The other one they had that they actually used, but it was an older one. So they took these two stoves to the wood, wood stove exchange program, got one new stove in exchange for the one they used but the piece of junk they never used they got 2500 bucks for it and they didn't replace it because they never used it didn't need it why isn't that theft well because the money grows on trees john oh it just magically appears i believe actually no i'm wrong it doesn't grow on trees it comes out of magical Our <laughs> no no it comes out of unicorns <laughs> along with their button of butterfly farts and Fairy kisses. We live in a, we do. We live in a fantasy world in which people can take and give something that have no value to the government and receive something of value, whether it's a new stove or whether it's money. That where did the money come from? People don't think about where the money came from because they don't want to think about it. Because if they had to think about, would you personally go to your neighbor's house, and kick in his door, and take money out of his pocket? No, not when you have a government that'll do it for you. Well, see, that's the thing is that even a lot of people who who would not do it, even if they thought about it in terms of having the government do it for them, they they would they no, that's theft. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't authorize someone to go in and kick in the door and take money out of my neighbor's pocket. But it's still, I mean, that's it's just as much theft whether it's done through a, an automatic taxation that you have to pay in order to keep your home, or if you you had thugs doing it. And and you know what? Let's say, just out of pure speculation, that when you guys go to leave here today, there are a couple of thugs waiting outside by the door, and they shake you down. And those, nah, they'll get shot. Well, they, yeah, <laughs> perhaps in, in, in your case, but I, uh, if a couple of thugs, after they shake you down, started asking around and saying, well, who should we give the money to? You know, we've, we've got all this money here. We need to give out some grants because we, we have more money that we, we took more money than we need. You know, and they ask you, the person who they took the money from, uh, what would you, I mean, what would you, you would say, I mean, obviously, give me I'd my say money. Give it back to me. Yeah, exactly. So, 
I mean, I know you've had all these politicians on your uh, show here the Wait, last no. month or so. <clears throat> We're talking about the wood exchange program, the wood stove exchange. I was just telling Steve, I know of someone. I don't actually know them, but somebody told me about it because they helped them move the stoves. He had one stove that he was using, and a piece of junk in the back of their house that they never used. It was not operable. Uh-huh. So they took the one they were using in, got a new stove for it, took the piece of junk in that they didn't use. They didn't want another stove for that because they didn't use it, didn't need it. They got 2500 bucks for it from the borough. And I've heard even our conservative, local conservative politicians running, they're the ones pushing it more than anyone. The, the wood stove exchange program. Now, how can people... Supposed conservatives, liberals, whoever you are, I don't really care. How can you justify that? How can you get on the radio and make ads and talk at the borough building or whatever and justify saying that that is okay? That because that's they're promoting that. responsible burning. Responsible burning. Well, that's been, I mean, the people you're talking about, that's their, their reason, what their about rationale. The, the is, theft part doesn't play anything That into. doesn't matter because that's, you know, if you don't like it, you can move outside the borough. That's true. Or if you don't like it, you can vote somebody in who will change things. Or go out of the How often do you hear that <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I just, uh, <laughs> I'd like anyone. No one will. Well, maybe right. No, I mean, right. for your, uh, that's the number one argument that you hear is for your right to live in this borough, you have to pay taxes. If you don't want to pay taxes, then move out of the borough. And if you don't like the way that they spend your tax money, move out of the borough. Isn't that a valid argument? Well, except for the fact that the borough will continue to grow outside its current boundaries until it, it's physically stopped. I mean, friends, what was it, a couple of, the last mayor we had before Hopkins? Or was it two mayors before Whitaker, was talking about extending the borough's boundaries all the way up to the Yukon River. <laughs> and, and the borough just, during the under the last administration, annexed a portion of the city of Fairbanks. I mean, right, right, no, I'm sorry, it was the op- opposite. The city of Fairbanks, city annexed, of Fairbanks. Uh, annexed a portion of the borough. Right, for tax revenue, uh-huh. money. So, I mean, you can't, you can't just move outside the boundaries because the boundaries will move to take you back in. Just like any any good sheep getting out of the corral. Bring them in. Oh, well, you know and what? Did, didn't people vote to not have a borough here? Yeah. yeah, they also were against the annexation of Fred Myers, weren't they? No, I know the people were against it, but uh, I actually did look at, uh, I found some history on that. The actual vote that was taken, uh, the people of Fairbanks did, in fact, vote to create a borough because they were told by the state they had to. You have to. So why would... Why would they vote on something that they had to do? So who is here first? Appropriation here. Let's get the property appropriation. Very, who is here first? Very the far. Indians. The Athabascans. <laughs> no, no. I mean, if you, if you want to go back okay. far enough, yeah, the Athabascans. Fast forward a little bit from the Athabascans. Well, oh, no, no. It, it's an important. I believe that there are some serious, some some actual serious ownership claims that could be had. Oh, that. I meant that as a joke, but we'll definitely get to the. No, I mean, and, no, no, no. Look at look, look at what happened with Judge Wickersham. The, uh, the federal judge that came up here, he rounded up, I don't know if you've seen the picture over there in Denny's. If you go to Denny's on Airport Way, there's a picture of like seven chiefs that that's up there on the wall. And it's the same picture that's been made into an, a sculpture over there by the Doyon Building. Very cool. Those are the original chiefs in the area mm-hmm. back in the turn of the century. Judge, Wish- judge Wishkerman got them all together and basically laid down the law and said, you will cede this land to us or we will throw you in jail. Okay. Did they get their land? The... Athabascans? Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, no. The the city of Fairbanks oh, the got city their of land. Yeah. Fairbanks mm-hmm. got the land. The Athabascans actually settled right here in the Fairbanks. They, I well, they they were buried on the UAF hill over there was one of the main berry picking areas for uh, Athabascans. Yeah, they were right here, right here. And so I think there really right. is I think there really is a serious ownership claim. Yeah, there, However, however a di- that's I mean, a different if, show though. If you move on, I mean after after the the land was taken and you've got the the people here in the city of Fairbanks, the city of Fairbanks was incorporated in 1903. Right, but there was people here for it to be incorporated. Too. Yes. So who is was okay, say the Athabascans. I don't care who it was. Who was here first? Humans or the government? <laughs> Uh, well, let me see. At the time, it was a territory. Well, it's not possible to create government of, without uh, humans. Aha! 
So there really, there really was no government here. That's what Judge Wilkerson was sent up here to kind of uh, foist a government onto this area. Right. So saying that the borough, you have to move out if you don't like it. We were here first. Humans were here first. We instituted, unfortunately, or it was, I didn't institute it. It was foisted on me. We were here first. So who has the rightful claim to the property? Humans do. The people do. Not the borough. So the whole argument of, well, if you don't like it, move, and it's a bullcrap argument. Right. That's I mean, like if uh, when it comes that would down. be like if Josh built a house, uh, went out somewhere and built the house, and then I came in out of nowhere and told him that he had to pay me uh, 10% of the house's worth every year. And he told me that he didn't want to do that, and I said if he didn't like it, he should move. Does that even make any sense at all? No. But it's the exact same of situation. It is. There's just more people telling you you have to pay. And, that, and, that's what it, and that's what it comes down to is that really every time you have a vote, especially when you're voting for, to pay for something, whether it's a bonding issue or what. In fact, that was pretty much the uh, the the issue that made it so that Fairbanks in court you know, turned into that area turned into a borough it was because the city of Fairbanks had uh, bonded for debt. <laughs> And when you said, yeah, we're going to go ahead and we're going to charge ourselves money to build this thing. We're going to pay it back over a period of time. And we're all going to agree to do that. But we never all agree. Exactly. We never all agree. You know what I think is funny is that people can identify with uh, personal property, but they can't identify with private property. So if Josh owns a gun, that would be a personal property item, not the same as his uh, private property, right? You don't consider... uh, uh, consumer items to be I do. personal or private property. They're personal property. It's a, the rules still apply the same, but that's the def, the different. You know, I people treat it different. I don't I don't own any um any private property, but I have lots of personal property, which I I feel that there's the same rules. I mean, anyone feels that the same rules govern those. They're mine. You can't just take them from me, right? But they're a much more transferable item. I mean. You can't drop your um, your private property and somebody else pick it up, and because they're the holder of it, they just appropriated it, right? So, if, but if I have a uh, a pistol, in my, well, a pistol's not a good example. A candy bar in my pocket and it falls out, and I don't notice it, and somebody else picks it up and starts eating it. Score. All right, score. They uh, they're the appropriator of it. I like score candy bars. Those are oh. <laughs> I mean, just, well, Steve was saying earlier about, uh-huh. you know, if we walked outside the studio and got mugged for personal property, it wouldn't be viewed the same way as if somebody came in and took our private property, it which the government does. Depends on who mugged you. Right, that's, that's If it was I'm, the IRS mugging you. Right, that's what I'm getting at. No one is, would care. Is people draw a different line between private property and personal properties. So if we walked outside the studio and got robbed for our personal properties in our pockets, the whole town would be appalled at getting the paper and this and that. But the state can take private property from individuals because it's very selective on who it affects. And they take those private properties and turn it into personal properties. The only reason that people are okay with it, it's not maybe that they're okay with it, but they've told themselves they are because they could be next. That's why they're okay with it. What are you going to do? What Vote for Luke do? Hopkins? Sure. The, the only reason that they're okay with it is because the state mandates it. Wait, but how many people out there don't see it as theft? That's what I don't understand. Like, that's why I brought up this wood stove exchange thing. How can you not say... I mean, that's so simple. You were given money that was taken from someone else for something that you're not even using. You got 2500 bucks, and a lot of people are doing it. How is it not theft? How is that not stealing? You got something from someone else. They was stolen, taken, not freely. I mean, there's very few people. I yeah, don't know the, anyone. What's funny is taxes if them. if we started taking phone calls right now about people that think it's ridiculous that Obama gave a bunch of people phones, to obviously to buy votes. And if we asked every single one of them if those vote, if they if he gave away free phones, everybody would say no. He didn't give away free phones. That money was taken from somebody. Right. Even Glenn Beck this morning said that those phones weren't free. The money was taken from somewhere. It was stolen from somebody. 
But right here on our local level, if you don't like it, move. Unless it has to do with Obama. If it has to do with Obama, then it's stolen. <laughs> because if it's Republicans taken, it was freely given. Hmm. That's what I've figured out. I, I, that's, I, yeah, you that's know what, though? People, people, do get, my taxes. people do get coerced, though, into paying their taxes by very, very well-meaning uh, individuals. I don't know how many times growing up as a kid I heard... Uh, my my preacher in the, the church that I grew up in in Arizona saying that we had to pay our taxes because we had to render under Caesar what is Caesar's. And I, it, it took me a long time to try to, to actually unravel that because if you think about it, where does that stop? If Caesar says that your children belong to, to him, right? do you go ahead and render under Caesar whatever Caesar says is his? I've always asked that when I've been told that started with my grandma when I was a young child and I said what's Caesar's and she didn't have an answer for it of course because no one knows what's what is Caesar's well, I mean, what does he actually own what's the state well besides that I thought we were the government <laughs> so we own everything right why do I have to render anything if you look at the context of it, I mean, you're looking at the he coin did. and the taxation. The coin belonged to Caesar because it had Caesar's picture on it, right? We'd have to give it to George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, Grant, Federal Reserve. I, I anyway, think, I yeah, just exactly. the, the concept here is the thefts part. I don't understand. People don't. People call your show, people call the radio, and we talk to people, and they say, wow, we got to have, Randy called, we got to have some kind of taxes, and blah, 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 and why? I mean, what's funny is the people that come and take your taxes, they're direct beneficiaries of it. So, of course, they don't mind. But there's something stinking, dirty, rotten, wrong about not paying your taxes and some jerk being able to come and take your home, take your property, because you didn't pay your serfdom. Well, Josh, that's what you get when you vote in Democrats, is you get people that will decide to take away your property if you don't pay your taxes. Wait a minute now. I know right where you're going, so just say it. Okay, I will say it. It doesn't matter who you vote in. They all go for the system that is and vote fealty to the state, including Michael Dukes, voted to have people's property taken away if they didn't pay their taxes. There's your great Republicans. Do you think Lance wow. Roberts, who they uh, everybody's hailing is uh, going to bring balance to the force, is going to go in there and get rid of property taxes? No. I don't you think, think he likes property taxes, but I don't think he likes them either. Them. But do you, well, you keep on hearing this idea that you've floated around of, well, we just need limited government. We just need to limit the amount of taxation. We're going to just go ahead and bring it down a little bit here. We're not going to abolish it. We're just going to limit it, as if somehow, yeah, you know what? I'm I'm perfectly comfortable with limited theft, Josh, as long as somebody only takes a couple of dollars out of my wallet and leaves me most of it. Haven't we decimated the thought of limited government by now i thought so are you like for the last you, year can you define private property in what way what are you talking about like the appropriation of it well no sense in getting technical with it it's simple it's what i own <laughs> but the problem with just saying that josh is obviously this community doesn't believe that you own it, it if at any point somebody else decides that what you have ought not to be yours, they can come take it. There's no way to uh, over philosophize that where people are going to understand that, though. They don't care. I mean, how many people? Well, I, I was going to say, look at all the people who voted, but only like 21% did. Yeah, so. one in five. One in five people went out and voted. And, you know, I, you always hear about, oh, it's, it's apathetic. They're No. They're they're protesting. They, how so can you, <laughs> if you only have 21% of the vote total, right? So 21% so, of registered so to, voters turned up. So for a guy to win, he had to have gotten way less than that 21%, right? So a guy's looking at had to get 11. <laughs> yeah, all, all you need is basically half of the people who show well, up. Well, almost every seat had more than two people run it. So, right, but a bunch of them got like. People that won got 5,000 votes. Yeah. Right. So how do they figure that that's a mandate to force their will on uh, 90,000 people? 
Well, because we didn't participate, we're giving uh, permission for them to do to us whatever they choose to do. When I saw 21%, I thought, right on, our show's working. 458-TALK is the number. You've got it on the Far North Tactical Saturday morning wake-up call. If you'd like to participate, we'll open up the phones in just a minute. Not in Nottingham. Not in Nottingham. Welcome back to Far North Tactical's Saturday morning wake-up call. And uh, joining us in the studio, of course, from Far North Tactical, we've got Aaron Bennett. And from Bighorn Enterprises, we've got Josh Bennett. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. All right, where would you like to go from here? We've got a couple of lines on hold, and we've got some thoughts perhaps percolating. Yeah, yeah they're bubbling. You want to take the calls? Sure. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. All right, they didn't hold, actually. They had gotten on hold, and then they didn't stay. Probably. Jeez. <laughs> what? Probably because they thought we were going to ask them to define property. <laughs> Making me think too much, man. You just entertain me with some nice thoughts about how if I vote in the right person, then everything is going to be okay. The guy sent me a text that said that uh, the government you have now is a direct result of voting for the lesser of two evils for generations. Hmm. That's exactly what you get. If you vote for evil, you still get evil, right? Is I wonder, can... Hey, we started talking... Is there private property in the borough? Maybe we should define it and then ask if there is. Sure. Go ahead. Your show. You want me to define private property? I it's already have. Up. I already have on a couple, couple of shows defined private property from um, how Hop would define it. And I want it. you to talk like Hop. I can't talk like the original Herman appropriation Pop. of the property is what we have to define when we talk about the. Pro- Go ahead. I can't understand you when you do that accent. Just, just speak. Speak. Come on. Basically, uh, the original appropriation of property, uh, the, the easiest way for me to define it to somebody is to um, put you on an island with two people. With one person uh, on one side of the island and another person on the other side of the island, and both those guys aren't even, let's just imagine that they don't, aren't even aware that the other two exist, or that the other person exists, and obviously to, subs, uh, to subsist, they both are going to build shelters and appropriate the land right where they're at in their immediate area to accommodate survival, right? Survivability. Um... And obviously they're going to uh, appropriate the land of the mass production to increase their survivability. That's common sense. Anybody can grasp that. And they're limited to their own persons. They're only going to be able to appropriate uh, so far, right? They're obviously not going to be able to um, appropriate the whole island. Let's say the island's a square 10 miles, which is pretty big if you're one person, right? So they can't appropriate the whole island. They can only appropriate a set amount of area that was sustained themselves, right? So that definition of private property is obviously very obvious. The part that they've appropriated is theirs. And anybody can see that if at some point the other guy wandered into uh, the other side of the island and found this other guy's structure and started immediately appropriating that guy's things to himself, like, well, this guy has way cooler um, way to sleep than I do, and so on and so forth. He just says, fine, I'm taking yours. We all identify that as theft, because the other guy had the original appropriation, right? Right, appropriation, basically, today, you can buy property. Sure. From the legitimate owner. Right, and, and no, no one would see that um, if uh, the guy on the other side of the island decided that he wanted to move down about two miles, and the other guy really liked his plot, if he was to sell his plot to the other guy for whatever they uh, agreed was an appropriate price, and he moved down the way and started over again... Everyone would see that as a legitimate. The the guy that owns the plot on the other side of the island would now own both of them. The other guy couldn't come back and say that, well, this is mine because he paid a set sum for it, right? Mm-hmm. All those things seem so obvious to us. Would it be 
w- could you say that the guy owned if you had the guy on each side of the island and both guys owned had appropriated plots of land of the guy on one side of the island came over and said for you to live here you have to pay me a set amount of money for you to to be able to live here or how about this what if five more people moved to the island and even their better own little property and they decide they don't want to have, make a living for themselves so they take they go to the two guys on the island and say yeah we're we're lazy bums and uh but we're here to protect you. We came to the island to protect you. We have five people, so we can protect other. the island much better than you guys can. The five people are there to protect the two from each other. And you and they tax, steal, from the two on the island to protect the two that own the private property from each other. That's basically what where we get the government part into it. So do the five people have, or does one person on the island have a right to a part of the other person's property? You see, now, what's going on here, Josh, is that you are asking some philosophical questions right now that people are not prepared to answer in their own lives. They are not prepared to come to this and, and think about it because they're not they're not taught to think. Well, that's too bad. That's what this show's for. Bring your brain. That's what we always uh-huh, say. Exactly. That's why we're asking the question. And Josh is laying it out perfectly. If you have one guy on one side of the island, one guy on the other side of the island, and five guys show up and hit a different corner of the island and discover these two um, adjacent, or they wouldn't be adjacent, but these two properties, and they say, hey, to keep you guys from having a dispute of any kind, not that you've had any, but to keep you guys from having a dispute, we're going to protect you from your neighbor, and we're going to protect you from your neighbor, and we're going to charge you X amount of fruit, bananas, and coconuts. Right, because those five people need to eat. Come on. Sure they do. And instead of having their own private property, what they did is they took part of the island and claimed it for themselves. They did nothing to, for it. They just said, this is our part of the island, these five people. We're not going to produce anything from it. You are, by paying us the fruit. Well, so we well what about you. if they promised to protect those two guys from outside raiders on the island? What if pirates came? Let Robinson Crusoe. That's been used against us on the show. What um, if uh, What if any one of those two guys decide to occupy the little piece of land that the five have and go and put a tent up on their property, even though they tell these two guys... This is our part of the island. You have to pay us bananas well, and coconuts long, to protect you from each other. As long as it wasn't in the Veterans Park portion of the island, then it would be okay. Because they, the people who di- fought and died to give the, li- the island that liberty wouldn't appreciate having somebody go and pitch a tent right, but as long, as in a long place as... that, that <laughs> where they were actually talking about liberty or the right to <laughs> speak out. I mean, you wouldn't want that happening in a place where you honored people who fought for liberty, would you? No. So are they... Whose liberty are they fighting for? So if they had outside pirates come in, wouldn't you need those five guys? Wouldn't all those taxes be appropriate at that point where they would say, well, it's a good thing we paid all these taxes? Okay, so let's say those five... Hang on, I I was going to say it. Damn it. (laughs) But what about if those five guys go over to an island that's two miles away and they raid that island? Do those two taxpayers, now that they have a jeopardy, they have a stake in what that five government uh, mandate does, and they go over and raid another island and provoke it, wouldn't they be inclined to go provoke that to be able to keep collecting taxes? Well, how as long they, as they are spreading democracy, who cares? Right? How would they protect the, the island? The Constitution clearly mandates that we spread democracy. They would protect the island with uh, muskets or something, right? Sure. Banana-wielding guns or something like that. So who would actually produce the banana-wielding guns? Well, not those five guys. Not those five guys, right. They don't really produce anything. Right. The two guys that own the land, that own the island, actually, that own the property on the island, they actually produce produce the guns that the five would use to protect. But those five wouldn't protect either. Here's the best part. They would would use the two guys to go over and fight on the other island with the muskets that they made... And call it protection. That's... <laughs> All right. 
<laughs> We're going to have to write this down into 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 something kind of a metaphor or We're analogy. To clarify and, and really. I really love islands. So who's the 99 percent of the five? That's what I'd like. To know. <laughs> All right, you guys ready to go back to the phones? Yeah. Four five eight donk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Good morning, it's Al. Al, what's on your hey, mind? Al, what's on my mind? You're sure talking in circles now. Uh-huh. <laughs> I thought um, that was pretty direct and clear, personally. Yeah, it's pretty clear that the inevitable thing that's going to happen is you're going to form one, two, several different governments and uh, well, legitimize been, whatever you're, you're trying to do. These guys didn't ask for it, though. This is more like... It doesn't know, matter. Right, they they're for forced not, to do it. They're going to be... Well, they're going to be either use their common sense and say the best value for my life and my property or what I think I own is to join up with these group. Pick a side. Whoever's got the most favorable and, and ideology. Right, if, if you got to pick a side, I mean... Well, you have a duty to pick a side. You don't have a choice to pick duty. a side. Well, you're, you're right to do it. They're but you brought up, Josh, a, an important thing that I think needs to be uh, defined a little bit more is a legitimate property owner or legitimate owner. Mm-hmm. Um, let's just take our state for right now. The state of Alaska owns property, doesn't it? Yes. And so, it belongs to the people? The how, that, that's yeah. an oxymoron. Well, All right, he knows. Go ahead. Go, I'll, I'll keep going. So why do you buy land from the state? Why don't you just take it and put a house on it? and? Because they'll shoot you. I mean, it all comes back. We've talked about this. It all comes back because they'll shoot you. Yeah. That's right. I mean, It goes right back to your island deal. You can't go and take the quote-unquote state's land, even though the state is the people, supposedly, but the state can darn well come and take yours. Yeah. Right, because you have the use of force. The best part about that is if we go back to our island and you have um, you have the middle part of this island that nobody's claiming, except for the five are obviously going to claim everything that the two don't have. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's more than obvious. But they're going to say that they all collectively own it. So if the two, have, they both have a son... And the sun decides he's going to expand out towards the middle of the island. Aren't the five going to demand payment for that? Possibly. And if they didn't, not possibly, you know that they would demand payment for that. And here's the best part. If they just went and squatted, wouldn't the five apply the use of force to get their payment? Possibly. But the, the part that I'm getting at is who would they use? The same people they use to fight their wars, create their guns, the same people. So they would use the two to bring the two sons back in. So how do you prevent it? Well, I think that I'm defining that pretty well, aren't they? No. How is government able to do anything if we're not doing it to ourselves? Yeah, there you go. And well, there you go. <laughs> how do you, how do you, I mean, you guys, Josh made the comment that, you know, not voting's working. What's working? What you're right. What is working? What is working? No, twenty percent of twenty pe- percent of the people here are still giving them legitimacy. Yeah. So what's working? Oh, well, we got to get the twenty percent to stop. We're working on it. <laughs> I think we're down from twenty three last year to twenty one. Yep. Ten more <laughs> years and we win. <laughs> <laughs> what do you win, Bill? If nobody votes, what happens? Then the government is illegitimate. That's all it is. It's illegitimate. Well, you, you th- imagine if no one voted for Luke Hopkins. Would he sleep very well that night? And he's still, okay, Norm Phillips. Norm Phillips is running against Luke Hopkins. No one shows up at the polls. No one. So what does Luke Hopkins do the next day? Is he still the mayor? He can say he is, but how good is he going to sleep that night when he goes to, when he goes to sleep and says, no one voted for me? Can Norm Phillips say he won? If well, if nobody voted, no, you know, nobody won. I mean, I, can't, I think part of what Josh is getting at, and I and I don't want to put words necessarily in your mouth here, but uh, basically, one of the reasons why our political elected officials act the way they do is that they've got it in their mind that because we the people, and I put that in air quotes, you've got to put those out there, we the people voted them in, we have given them permission to do whatever it is they want to do. We have given them legitimacy. We have given them a mandate. We have given them the right to go ahead and make their own decisions without consulting us. And if they know that they don't have that, they are going to be a lot less likely to go out and come up with some asinine idea by trying to create a public utility to deliver gas to people who don't need it. They might not even come out of the building. But do you ever... 
do you ever think that you could ever see a time where nobody votes? Yes. There's a book out right now called The Art of Not Being Governed by James C. Scott. It's an anarchist history of upland southeast Asia. I'm looking at a link sent to me here by the uh, Ludwig von Mises Institute. I know I'm reading all this anarchist crap lately. Nice. But, but here, the whole purpose of this, this culture, far from being the archaic traits of savage people, this is actually designed, purposely crafted, to thwart incorporation into nearby states. And also to minimize among themselves this idea of forming a government, of I'm going to tell you what to do. If you look at the history of these people in that area, they have intentionally kept themselves from becoming governed or governable. What's that? The history of the United States has that in the 1600s, 1700s, over and over and Mm -hmm. over. We've lost it, though. Because we've sent our children to be indoctrinated into the state. And whether or not... uh, People end up not voting someday. Really, in my mind, I don't care. I don't care if they want to do something that's wrong and evil. That's the way I see it. I say it's wrong. It's wrong to force your will on your neighbor. So I don't care if they stop voting. I'm not. I'm not going to force my will on them. Let them do what they want. So the forming, you know, I've done some research this week when you're talking about voting, and, and you guys like to use quotes from Jefferson Thomas, Thomas and others. And I was surprised at how many quotes from all our founding fathers on the importance of voting. The founding fathers also set it up so only people that own property could vote. Yeah. So if if we're going to appeal to them and their uh, cry for voting, shouldn't we we be in keeping with what they set it up as? And most of their appeals to voting are the the vote of the jury. And actually most of their appeal to voting was actually the representatives themselves. That's exactly what when... uh, John uh, Adams, no, the kid, Quincy. John Quincy Adams, when he said that whenever you vote, let your vote always be of your conscience, that's way you can go to sleep at night, whatever. He was not talking about, I mean, I've heard that from a lot of people, oh, you know, he says to vote your conscience, you need to vote for the, I mean, heard Glenn Beck talking about him today, I think it was. He was talking about the actual representatives voting for the right thing in Congress, no matter what, even if you vote alone, that's what he said. He wasn't talking about the people, even if you vote, even if you're the only one to vote for Romney, you got to vote for Romney. He was saying if you're the only congressman that votes the way, votes the right way, then that's, man, I'm getting some No, I understand crazy perfectly what you're saying, feedback. but somebody, somebody voted that congressman in. Originally, right, that, that was, would be yeah. the point so that, that he should so, vote so his conscience whether he's voting alone or not, like Ron Paul. Someone did vote them in, and it was the uh, property owners. But I mean, that was the first. That was the first for, That was the first go at a republic at the time. But uh, I think we've pretty much proven the fact that it does not work. Voting's gotten us what we've gotten Re- today. And you see, republics historically always degenerate into one of two things. Democracies, Democracies and tyrannies. And tyrannies, exactly. Yeah. And and even tyrannies eventually degenerate into, I mean, democracy, what did I say? Democracies eventually degenerate into tyrannies as well. Right, they always do. Always right. have. Yeah. And even the founding fathers went on and on and on that we could never have a democracy. They were afraid of the vote of the people. They did not ever want a vote of the people to gain. And yet, where, where are we status. at now? We've got people clamoring to vote on every issue. They're they're clamoring to basically do away with the representation that we have and and just have put everything up for a vote. And we never got to vote for pre- uh, we the people never got to vote for president or senators. Right. The popular vote was not an issue. It was, it was just certain landowners got to choose certain congressmen, represent, representatives, and they chose senators, and they chose the president. Al, Which the, would probably work a lot better, because you wouldn't have anybody voting in people that would uh, take property. <laughs> that would keep a limited government. That was the only reason why property owners mm-hmm. were the only ones that could vote, because they would never choose someone that would tax them on their property. Right, exactly. Right, so Al, government would stay pretty limited. The haves would never vote to take away from them. It's always the have-nots that want something. Well, and, and if you think about every time it comes up for a vote, even in a local level, the people that are, have an opportunity to come out and say, well, shall we raise the taxes? Well, what are the taxes that we're raising here? It's always property taxes. Right. If it, if it were, shall we introduce a sales tax? No. 
people consistently vote no. Why? Because the people with themselves would end up paying for it. Right, and they know that, uh, I mean, people that don't own property get to vote on raising exactly. or lowering property taxes. Right. That's Which is funny. That's, that's hilarious. So wrong. Oh. Awesome. Shall I shall I make it so that somebody else pays for my lunch today? Uh, yes. Yes. yes yeah. Especially when sixty percent of them are direct recipients for the lunch because they work for the government. So of course they want more taxes. <laughs> Voting reading, works. Though. I just read something on the uh, news minor the other day. Someone said that they were. I'm proud every time I pay my property taxes. And I wish I knew who the person was because obviously they either don't own property or they work for the government. Guaranteed. All right, let's go to another call here. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Who's this? Is that me? That is you. It depends on who it is, though. Oh, this is Abe. What's going on, guys? Abe, what's going on? Oh, man. I uh, I simultaneously love it when Al calls and hate it because my my uh, my pulse usually goes through the roof and i got to go take a blood pressure pill or something. Man, it... I I really appreciate how um, both Josh and Aaron, whenever they talk to me, they always bring me back to the fact that they talk about how simple all you know all the the, the idea of liberty really is. When it you know when we talk about property rights, you don't have to say, well, what is property or what are rights? I mean, you can literally say, well, pretty much if you know if I'm the person who worked and applied my time to it, and if it's in my possession and I didn't come by it by depriving somebody else, then it's pretty much my property. And I think that every single time you try and get caught up in the theological, who's this, what is government, blah, 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 you're, everyone's brain gets stuck into, and it's, and it's super easy to be swayed in, well, maybe maybe we do need a government. But if you boil it down to what what property is, then it makes it so much easier to understand what liberty is. And once you can understand what liberty is, then you can start talking about the more complicated things, and I—I I don't know. That's just what my thought was this morning. I just thought of a brain teaser for you, though. Oh, great! All right. So, if someone gets property from the government, and I don't mean land, uh, just uh, if someone gets something from the government, say a wood stove exchange program, they get a stove. Yep. Do they own it, and can the original appropriator of the money that bought the stove come and possess it? On the surface, no, they don't own the stove because they got by, it came by uh, illegitimately. If you have the mafia go steal something for you and then they give it to you, that doesn't mean that you got it legitimately. So the original appropriator should have the right to go take that stove back since it was stolen from them. Yep, from a technical standpoint, I would I would say yes. Nice. That wasn't I, hard enough. I'll have to think of it. I know that. I know that. I know that. I know that. In our little circle of friends, we would boil down into, well, I know, but once it's stolen, you can't really figure out who really owned it, you know. But the, the point is, is if I, it's I think stolen, I think you can if you um, go if you, back. If you say we're all government, you can. Well, that's true. I, I think you can if you. I mean, I don't know how well Josh and I transported people to our little island, but if you go to our little island, it becomes so obvious. Of course. Is it, yeah. could. I just want to know, is it like a subtropical, or is it, we're talking down by well, Chile and it's kind of cold? No, it has forest. to be subtropical because they want to produce year-round. Oh, yeah, bananas. I was going to say, if you if you really want to make it complex, we're just going to go to the Arctic Circle and try and live there and then see what really happens. And you're going to have people banding together and working together. <laughs> You know, I'm glad I'm glad you went there, Abe, because Without. right right now, I mean, this is a great example. Right now, what's going on in Kivalina? Do you know? What? I don't even know where that's at. Kivalina, it, it's up there, uh, out, out toward the coast. I thought it is that one was of, a character on Bugs. No, Bunny. it's one of the er, it's one of the eroding villages right now. It's a village that didn't used to exist because the people that used to live there were nomadic and they would pick up and move from place to place. But because of government bribes, basically subsidies, whatever you want to say. They put down roots in one place. Oh, the coastal village. You're talking about Exactly, right. the coastal village of Kivalina. And then, because they weren't living up to the standard that the government thought they should be living up to, they were given money, grant money, to go out and build sewer systems and water systems and these other things, which, if you think about it, doesn't really make an awful lot of sense in an Arctic environment. But they went ahead and built it with the free money, the grant money, the government money, whatever you want to say right now. It's all eroding. It's coming apart. They're, they're, they're without clean water right now, and people are me, clamoring to go help them. Steve brought up a good point. So you said originally they were nomadic, right? Yeah. So, in other words, they, they would pick up and they would move. They would travel appropriately uh, to the environment around them, right? They're going to move to the better hunting grounds or whatever it may be. So my question is, is, does that mean that everywhere that their feet passed, 
going from place to place because they didn't claim any place as their own. You just said that. Do they own everything of everywhere that they pass? It's a completely different mentality. It's a completely different way of looking at things because they don't believe that it's possible for people to own the earth well, or, that's to own, it, or to it, own the isn't, air. Isn't that true for about 99% of all the um, Native American tribes? Yes. So do they own all that they see? They own nothing of what they. I mean, that's the whole point: is that they they think it's impossible to own that which was not which does not belong to anyone. And they okay. I mean, it'd be like us saying, "Look, I I own the air. This is my air." And it's ridiculous. It is still well, some I, of it. I think that I think that you know, going back to uh, the subject that Steve just brought up, you know, I mean, you can you can go off of who owns the land. But I think that one of the 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 more interesting argument, which I think really brings people into it, is the fact that. The problem wouldn't exist in the first place if the government wasn't busy getting, you know, intervening in other people's business. And so basically a government came along, uh, appropriated whatever wealth, created money, whatever you want to call it, subsidized an entire people group into doing something that the market would not have incentivized them to exactly. do in the first place. And then, and now the problem is, you know, they're, they're, they're having issues with their septic can really be boiled down to the fact that the government intervened in the first place. I mean, they wouldn't be even thinking about it because a lot of people... I mean, a lot of the people who would have been nomadic at that time might, might have said, well, we're not going to live here. I mean, we've been, we, we know what happens every year. We're not going to put roots down. Well, that didn't happen. The government said, we'll take care of it. It's basically going to be free for you. You, you don't have to think about whether this, this property is going to fail in the future. And so then the property was created by the government, you know, illegitimately. People live on it. And now when it's failing, people are like, oh, well, you know, we need help fixing it. And so who do they have to turn to? The people who, who, created it in the first place. And I so, guess the real question, though, Abe, is once they settled down, what we really need to ask them is if they voted. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's all that matters. Te technically speaking, I mean, you can you can tie that argument back into voting and, you know, particip participation in government. And I hear music. Oh, you, I thought I heard music. No, you do hear music. You're correct. We are up against the top of the hour. Thanks for the call, for Abe. Call, all right, uh, gentlemen, you want to hold on to the phone lines that are there into the next hour, or you want to zap them? Sure. Sure. All right, we're going to hold the phones. 458-TALK is the number. If you can't get through, keep trying, because eventually we'll answer some of those phone calls. Up next, Patriots Lament on KFAR right after the Fox News. We're online at KFAR660.com, and you can find us on your smartphone with the TuneIn Radio app. And welcome to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR, where we talk about, well, pretty much try to keep it focused to liberty issues. And a, a lot of it has to do with the theoretical stuff that you don't get in school, yeah, that you don't get in popular culture, that you don't have to think about on a day-to-day -day basis. In fact, that you're encouraged not to think about on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm Steve Floyd, the man, uh, the monkey behind the machine here. But joining me in the studio, the ones that make the program, uh, we've got from Far North Tactical, Aaron Bennett, and from Bighorn Enterprises, we've got Josh Bennett. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. All right. All of our lines are on hold from the last hour. What would you like to do? Be the supreme dictator for life. What would you like to do? I would Be like to vote. Dictator? I would like to vote for you. <laughs> because you know what? As long as I vote, I know I'm making. A as difference. long as you voted for me to be your supreme dictator for life, then anyway, no, like no, even if I voted for somebody else, as long as I went out there and voted, that's true. Then I would be doing my duty. I think people. Well, I was thinking about Al's call real, real quick. I know you told these people to get to the phones, but real quick, <laughs> if this can be quick, when. Al basically was saying, well, you'd have um, inevitably form some kind of government. Right, right? inevitably get people together, came together. But just because people get together and do something doesn't necessarily mean government. Government comes into effect when a sect of people decide to start stealing from you. I was talking to Steve about this a little bit. We were talking about this a little bit earlier. Steve has a church, and the people at that church, they uh, purchased a new building. And they're renovating it. Now, no one steals money for them or forces them to go volunteer to work at that church, right? To renovate no, it. No, we don't, we don't go out and make anybody go over there. Right. So they're doing it on their own free will. They're doing it as friends and as a congregation, as members of that church. Or, I mean, you don't have to call them members, whatever you want to call them. So does that make them a government? Does that make that church a government per se? No. So people getting together and making their lives better does not constitute government. 
Now, there's governance at that church, right? Absolutely, there's governance, but that's among those who are, I mean, the whole leadership of the church, the whole point of it is to, to do what they think God wants them to be doing, and the members of the congregation can either choose to go along with it or choose not to. Exactly. They can leave, they can they can leave come and go as anytime they, they want to. We don't go out there and say, hey, so, you, Aaron, you need to be a part of our church, and we are going to come and make you tithe and make you... Give your okay, time. so let's let's flash back to the island really quick, where oh, I love to hang. It's tropical there. Come on, I like to be there. So we're back on our island. So if the island was being raided by pirates, and we know that the uh, five that landed there that called themselves government are going to use the arms made by the producers and use the physical bodies of the producers to fight off the pirates. If you took the five out of the picture and those, if the five were out of the picture, would the two still be able to put up an adequate defense? Would their defense be any more or less without the five? It would actually be more because there wouldn't be five that were wasting part of the production. Because you still have to keep the five alive while you're fighting for the island. Sure. And... If you didn't have the five there to mandate defense, would you have half the island not fight? Not if their not if their property was. Well, right, they're, even they're, even there's a, there, there's even a big difference too between defending your home, defending your island, versus sending somebody over to take somebody else's island. All right, yeah. right, but those two <laughs> those point. two are never going to go be aggressors because they have no monetary gain from that, right? Only the five would have a monetary gain from that, especially with the uh, the thought of the loss of life. So the two aren't going to be aggressors in the absence of the five it's called their government. So war would obviously become a lot less because you know, how many um, peoples have started wars? <laughs> oh, 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 anyway, so the point I'm trying to make is, of but course, of course, both them, sides... Right? Of course, both guys would defend the island, because if half of the island's getting attacked, it's basically indiscriminate which side would get attacked. You, you never know. So they would both defend each other for obvious reasons, because the other wouldn't afford the other protection if they didn't afford each other protection. Right. And I, I know that you're, you're off on this theoretical island here, Aaron, and we also have all four of those well, calls yeah, I'm, on hold, I'm ready to but, take calls. I, just, right. I like the island. I like to be trying. Remind me, I had a, a question to ask you in terms of that issue of war and, and what causes the war. 458 Talk is the number. This is Patriots Lament. Are you still there? Hello? Hello. Who is this? It's Karen. Karen, go ahead. Oh, I just was wondering, uh, the theme of the shows are always don't vote, don't vote, but... I remember about three years ago, the Bennett brothers wanted everyone to vote for them, right? Yeah, it was great. Right, and are you guys not running on sour grapes, and now you're trying to turn this town into... I was listening to your your show recording about freedom and liberty and this and that, and part of my freedom and liberty is to vote. And it seems to me, every time I listen on Saturday morning for the Better Breakfast Show and then Patriots Lament, it's the same theme of don't vote, don't vote, don't vote, don't vote, and then you guys are off somewhere else. Do do you know that um, the last time I ran, I was only beat by one person? There's eight people in my seat, and I lost to one person. So that means I I beat six, six out of the eight. And since then, I've been on the radio pretty much nonstop. Used to come on on Mondays with Steve, uh, come on Saturdays with Josh, and started my own show. Do you think that it's more likely that if I would have ran this time, since I only lost to one person and I've had airtime nonstop, that my odds of winning are a lot better? Then why didn't do you, you, do run you think? Again? Do you, you think that? Because you wanted it three years ago. I mean, I'd have to use Michael Dukes as my example. Um, He's obviously has merits that people wanted to vote for. I understand that, but they knew of those things because of the mass amount of airtime he's had for how many years? Nine, ten, twelve years? Years, yeah, I know. Which is, I don't think was fair that he has airtime and then got to run and still keep his show. Bob Miller didn't stay on the news when he was right, running. Right, that, but that's not the that's not what I'm addressing. I'm saying 
Do I think that I could win? Sure. Yeah, you're, I'm addressing your sour grapes question. Uh, losing has nothing to do with it. We I didn't just, vote before we ran right, for Right. I've never, the only time I'd ever voted in my life up to the point when I ran for office was I'd voted for Ron Paul one time, whatever, four or eight years ago. Did you vote for yourself? I didn't. Did I vote for myself? Um, I voted for Josh. I voted for Aaron. Well, I don't know. This, this well, here's the thing, theme. though. We're we're not forcing you not to vote, right? Oh no, I you can, still vote. And you I can. Uh, will vote. That's it's fine. The show, the show just seems to take its own. I don't know what's going on Saturday morning. There's people calling on Michael Duke's show, complaining about this show. You know, saying that's they're fine. cutting it off and stuff. Well, they can call here and complain to us anytime they want, but they don't. I mean, we this show we pay for it. This is yeah, just that's our, what somebody it's, said. That's it's, what somebody said on, so you guys can say and do anything you want to do on the show. But Do you don't think that we have that. the right to do that? Oh, you can do that. It's the show. You don't pay for the Better Breakfast Show. We're not on the Better Breakfast Show. Sir, you are on the Bed and Breakfast Show every time I listen. No, 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 excuse, no, no we're not. Ma'am, I, I, I want to make sure. I'm Steve Floyd. I'm the one who's on the Better Breakfast Show, and that is the morning news show that has absolutely nothing to do with this. Did that just not get we, over, and then we went to Patriots? Ma'am, we, no, 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 that, that was, was the, that was the Saturday, Saturday morning, morning wake-up wake up call, call, which is done by Aaron. See, I, I pay for the Saturday morning wake-up call. Josh pays for the Patriots lament, and Josh and I both pay Steve for his time to be here. Steve's paid to be here. And I am a capitalist. I will come on, and if anybody wants to buy airtime, I would you be wanted, happy If, if you be wanted to buy airtime, to come here. Right. All right. How much is the airtime, Steve? Uh, you know what? You can call me, you can text me off the air, and I will tell you, because I can't uh, give you a quote on the air, because I will be held to it for Sometimes everybody. I feel like my morning talk show, is, I'm being hijacked or something. You don't that have, you don't have to, to. Nobody's in. making you listen. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, I thought, well, I'm going to listen, and this time I'm going to call these guys. Right, but you can I, vote not to listen. You can choose. Nobody is making you listen to this program. And all we're doing, I mean, you're free to vote, and that's great. I mean, but all we're doing is we're asking people to think of a different possibility besides the same thing that we're so doing you, over and over and over. You said you lost by one vote. I don't know if that's... I'll Not one vote. He, he, he didn't no. lose one vote. He, there was, there was eight, eight people, people running. running in my seat. For the seat I was going for, there was eight people running for it. And and Michael Dukes was beat saying, Tammy, Tammy Wilson, he said she lost by 12 votes. She didn't lose by 12 votes. She lost by 844 votes to Luke Hopkins. So I know, the, I, I mean, I listen to talk radio, and yeah, it's hate radio. And I listen to it, and I hear a whole bunch of lying going on. So if you lost by how many votes, I, I would like to check. Just I like, never said I lost by any amount of votes. I said I lost to one person. Okay, but uh, I, I, don't I, know. I beat I beat the Republican I beat the Republican candidate, the one the Republicans were backing, and I beat the um, the, the Democratic uh, uh, nominee. I beat them both. The person I lost to was Guy Satley, who had won years and years and years and years in a row, and he was yeah, very he was I, very identifiable, right? So right. He so if I would have ran again, and there wasn't a Guy Satley out there that had won numerous times before, what were my odds of winning? Obviously, I'd already crushed everybody except for somebody that everybody could identify with. So, so I I would have been I would be the most identifiable candidate. Right. If we're in pretend world every Saturday morning, how would your show be running if you did win? Uh, you know, we're, we're way, way off in theoretical land right here. I mean, let me dr- bring it back to reality for just a every minute. Saturday why, morning why do you, why do you, off. why do you listen every Saturday morning? We'd be talking about the exact same thing, even if sure. Every you got You got to use Saturday morning for weeks or months on end. Yes, yeah, so let's use Natalie. Years. Let's use mm-hmm. Natalie Howard as our example. Natalie Howard like does Natalie, Natalie Howard does Howard sit on the borough assembly and she doesn't advocate voting. Natalie Howard sits on the assembly and she doesn't advocate stealing from your neighbor. She votes basically she spends all of her time voting no and trying to convince the other people to vote no. She wants vote n- no or to not to vote. Negligent votes. All right. 
I was wondering what would have happened if you won the, that election three years ago. I think there would have been a tear in running. the space-time continuum. And the way we're going right now, can we move on? We are in a... All right, thanks for the call. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Good morning. Hey, it's Cecily. How are you? I'm doing good. Hold on. Turn this off. Uh, I, I was listening, and uh, it, I noticed that every person who calls in to argue against the voting... Uh, against people not voting, seem to argue for it every single time. I, uh, like, just like the the woman who calls herself the battle axe was saying, you know, they did this and they do that and they the other thing, and then, you know, and then it's all your fault for telling people not to vote. But that that she's every argument that she had, well, that any of them came to to tell you that, you know, you should vote all had a great argument against voting. And uh, and it, it, I don't understand how they can't hear what's coming out of their own mouth. Sure. Or un- understand that they're arguing against themselves straight up. And, and I tell you, if you're out there voting, you're out there pushing somebody else around. You are a bully. Right. There's a guy that calls Duke Show. Um, I've heard him call numerous times. And every time he's calling to yell about the guys on the Saturday show talking about not voting. And every time he's like, don't they understand that voting is the most sophisticated warfare ever created? Yeah, I should participate in warfare. If everybody right. stops participating... And if, and what, in... is, what is warfare? <laughs> Dominating each other, right? Right. Destroying each other, right? Right. So, yeah, um, don't they understand that it's destroying each other? You have to participate. Yeah, I wish we could understand that it is absolutely that. It's destructive means to an end. It's destruction. We fight each other over politics. We fight each other over government. But what We if, should be neighbors, right? You can go over to your neighbor or whatever and cook up a steak and drink a beer and, oh, yeah, yeah, and bring up politics. Next thing you know, you're butting heads, you're beating each other up, and you're never coming over here again. You leave. Politics is destructive. Why can't people understand that? Politics is destructive. More than anything else you fight over, what's the nation divided over right now? Politics. Who's going to be the president? Politics. Who's going to run the government? Politics. Who's going to wield the sword over me? And look at what what happens if you lose the vote. I mean, Tammy Wilson herself, the sponsor of that anti-wood smoking or whatever, the anti-wood burning ban the, the, She was actually in favor of making it so that they can't ban burning. I mean, basically, people understood. Right. Uh, but the, the very sponsor of that initiative came on the show on Problem Corner and said that if she lost, she would still disobey and burn wood. The borough I and burn wood, and that she would go against the will of the people. Actually, Josh asked Dukes the exact same question. He said that he wouldn't obey it. Well, they would only go the, against the will of 20% of the people. But that's that. That's the whole point, though, is that they're they're 20. they're trying they're trying to get people to come out and participate in this system, which they themselves will not abide by. If it doesn't go their way, I and thought, that, which is why, I mean, you look at the borough assembly. E- how even, many times have we voted no on stuff and they still do it? You know, Al calls in all the time and says the same thing. And but Josh has put that question to him too, and he says that he wouldn't abide by rules that violate what he considers to be his natural rights. Well, most but he'll go vote on them. <laughs> Does what, that make any sense at all? What bigger point did it make? Okay, what what would have a more impact? On the borough assembly or the borough bill, whatever. If the people that came out and voted for the right to burn wood to keep the borough from doing whatever they're going to do, which they don't, it's not really legitimate because in two years it's up, right? So how is that moral law? It's obviously not an ethical and moral law if it can be changed. So sure. people that voted for that, you guys. You don't even realize that you voted for something that's not moral or ethical because it can be changed. Any law that can be changed is not moral or ethical. It's not real law. So what more, What would have had a better effect? Voting for that and going, yay, we won. But in two years, we got to do it again and again and again and again. Or if everyone that voted for that would have went down and marched right in front of the uh, borough building with a sign or a protest or whatever, sat down, ringed around the building or whatever, and just said... Go smoke crack pipes or something because we 
are burning wood. We don't give a crap what law you guys pass. We're going to do it anyway. Well, look at what happened. I mean, if you want, if you want to really know, look at what happened historically. I don't think it'd be on the ballot again. Yeah, and you look at what happened historically when uh, the people in Boston didn't like the tea, or rather, didn't like the tax that was being levied on the tea. That, what did they do? They went out and put an initiative to revoke the tax? No. no. They, they went out it. and they dumped the tea into the harbor. They dumped all of the tea. The tea that they were going to buy, the tea that somebody else was going to buy, all of the tea that belonged to somebody else that was out there on the ship, they dumped it into the harbor. It was an act of vandalism. It was theft. It was heroic because... It basically said, now you've got nothing to tax. They teabagged the how's, British. How's that? How's that tax working out for you now? Yeah. You know, and if you if if people want to keep on voting about something and keep on keep this warfare going, that's great. But until we t- we go over there and we dump those borough vehicles in the river, <laughs> until we go over there and 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 burn. Hey, you, and, you guys and, remember when the, the when the Tea Party first started up? How they got their name, the Tea Party? They first started up by taking tea bags and putting them on uh, IRS. Um, buildings, right, all over. It was the, symbolic of what the uh, what had been done at the Boston Tea Party. But right, it, it originally started out saying that um, we won't pay income tax. <laughs> that we were protesting income tax was the original Tea Party. Look I don't think be, they did. It never said they wouldn't pay. Mm. Just yeah, like, they taxed enough already. That's what the T right. stood for. The Tea Party taxed enough. Taxed already. enough already. Now look what it's become today. Well, taxes rob people. <laughs> The taxes rob people of the the joy of giving. Yeah, that's a good point. That really is. Because how many people now? How how much of charitable giving dropped off now that, that the government is paying for well, all we, these? We know it has, but I bet it brings great joy to uh, Luke Hopkins when he gets his tax money. So we're bringing joy to at least five or six people in the borough <laughs> assembly too. But he's 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 enjoying give, getting, not giving. Yeah. Yeah. The idea of giving. Oh, he is, gives too, though. His friends and all this and that and whatnot, what have you. Thanks for the call, Cecily. But what better thing to do instead of voting on the stupid thing? The people that voted for it would have on Thursday night or whatever would have stood outside the building before the assemblyman came in and stared him down. You don't got to touch them or beat them up. We're not talking about violently letting these people know, but letting them know. I don't give a crap what you guys vote on. We don't care. You do not have the right to tell me I can't heat my home. Exactly. And then when they came out the building, you're still there. Or you marched into the building with them, and you packed the thing. That would have an effect. We're just too busy to do that. And then when they did what they wanted anyway. We're too busy to vote. Yeah, everyone managed to do that. And then when they actually passed, you know, did whatever they wanted and instituted a wood smoke burning ban or whatever, you just burn your wood anyway. What could they do? Uh, well, that's the whole point, though, Nothing. is that they had already passed it, and nobody was really seemed to care until somebody tried to reverse what they had done. It's like, well, where were you when they passed it in the first place? Right, but what would they? What could they do if we all burned wood, even with that that law? They could fine you. They, they would levy do, a fine. They couldn't do anything if everyone that voted for it they, stood up and they would find you actually without, acted like Americans without the power. And stood for their liberty and said, that "Screw fine. you, live free or die. Don't tread on me." Remember I'm the burning bur- wood. The borough does not have the power to go out there and physically collect your taxes or to physically take your home. Exactly. That's what's so pathetic about this stupid borough and the people that live here. Come on, they can't even do anything to you, and we won't resist them a little bit. We won't even resist them a little oh, bit. Oh, that's where you're wrong, sir. You see, the people turned out and they voted to vote <laughs> to the vote and the bet and they voted the ban down. They flipped the coin and, now, and said whatever happens, and now, I'll agree. Now we have the right to burn our wood. And the people that voted for it, like uh, Mrs. Wilson and Michael Dukes, the people that voted for it, if it didn't pass and the borough was able mm-hmm. to restrict the burning, they, they have themselves. A duty. Yeah, but they said that they weren't going to obey. Right, but they had a duty to <laughs> obey it because they flipped the coin and said, I'll do whatever the masses want. That's the whole point about being free, is not the masses, the majority, doing what they want to the minority. You ever heard the Liberty the is about the minority living free to do as they please, no matter what the majority says. And there's a phrase out there, the tyranny of the majority. Yeah. And that's that's something to, to watch out for. We're coming up on the Which break here, and we've also got a couple of lines on hold Two where you guys want to go. Two lamb. Deciding, deciding what's for, for dinner. Lunch. Benjamin Franklin. And but what's the rest of that? The rest of that. Um, 
quote. Freedom is a well-armed lamb. Exactly. <laughs> Four, five, eight, talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Uh, good morning. Hey, who is this? Uh, Eric. Eric, well, go ahead. What's on your mind? Um, philosophically, I understand where where they're headed, but yeah, you just you just you guys just not pay your your taxes, and you'll find out where these teeth are coming from. Okay, the borough. Um, you have a uh, property lease or a title to the lease. You don't really own the property. You uh, you rent your property lease. Okay, you're allowed to have equity in the property, but it's not really your property. I get it. I understand that. And uh, but you say, uh, just see what they can do. Well, eventually they will find somebody to take their property. Let's make it clear whose property it is. It is not your property. It is their property because eventually the troopers will come after they send you so many notices and they'll evict you off their land. Now, the only way you're going to get anywhere realistically is if you get off the borough, get off the get off the plantation, okay, and start your own community. Call it I don't know, no tax fund. <laughs> no, that's a good point. We've talked about that a lot, yep. actually. And some of our fr- out. and some of our friends have done it. Yep. I mean, Dave Diesel is gone. He has left the building. And we need to leave this conversation for just a moment for the Fox News right here on KFAR, Local Talk Radio. Balanced. All right, welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. Local Talk Radio, but we are streaming live around the world at KFAR660.com. And if you've got a smartphone, you can find us with the TuneIn Radio app. Uh, Joining us in the studio, of course, the people who make this show not just make it sh- possible, but actually the reason why the show is here, it's uh, Josh Bennett from Big One Enterprises and uh, Aaron Bennett from Far North Tactical Gentlemen. Hello. All right, you ready to go to the phones? Contemplating nothing but escaping, finally making it. Oodle lolly. Oodle lolly. Golly, what a day. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Is that me again? It, it might, well, is this Abe? Yeah, it is. Holy oh. cow. We're going to tax you for calling twice, dude. <laughs> yeah, I didn't call twice. I called... That was a different hour. Previous, did, different, yeah. completely show. Completely I mean, different show. Yeah. 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 I I was triggered again. My heart started racing, and uh, everyone keeps talking about, you know, if you're not going to vote, well, then maybe you should just move out of the borough and stop paying your taxes. And I think that they keep missing the point that, you know, I pay my taxes so the government doesn't come and kill me or take my land. I don't vote because I believe voting is me attacking other people. And so I, for me personally, I'm, I'm going to still do certain things to be defensive of, you know, of my right, you know, and to protect my family. But at the same time, I'm not going to exercise my quote unquote right to use force against somebody else through voting. I think that's a big difference. I'll leave it at that. All right. That's, a, that's that last, an excellent point. The caller we had before the break, too, he was absolutely correct. Mm-hmm. They will eventually come and kill you. They do. They come, and, and, but they also, even if you move out of the borough will eventually come in and try to force you into there, too. I wish that people would actually internalize what he said a little bit more. That caller, you don't own your property. Hmm. If someone can take it arbitrarily, you don't own it, obviously. If you can't do with it what you want to do with it without getting permission from somebody first. You don't own it. You don't really own it. If you have to pay a rent, you don't own it. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? This is Randy. Good morning, Randy. What's on your mind today? Well, I don't mean to be a nitpicker, but... Oh, uh, yes, yes, you, you do. do. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, regarding uh, last year's election when uh, Aaron ran against uh, Guy Satley and Leslie McFarlane and Michael Palembrus and John Kohler Jr. and Ed King, uh, just looking at the uh, next day's paper from October 5th, 2011, last year, it looks like uh, Aaron Bennett, I think, did the best amongst uh, the other conservatives. But I would say that uh, Guy Satley, of course, like he said, uh, got the most. He got 4,265 votes, and Aaron got uh, 2,190 votes. But John King, uh, John, uh, excuse me, Ed King, the liberal, I think the union's choice, yeah. he came in actually second. He, he got 2,884 votes. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, well, so just a nitpicky little thing, but I just thought it. No, it did up. change. Thank you for the. Uh, yeah, that's right. It it changed uh, right at the end. The last precinct I was in second till like the bottom out, the bottom of the hour, okay. basically. Uh, uh, the last precinct that got counted at King came came up and over me. All right, thanks for the call, Randy. Actually, Appreciate though, it. we kind of won that. because. We pretty much accomplished everything we wanted to. Yeah. We did want to get on the borough so we could vote no on everything and try to dismantle it piece by but, piece. But you're but. you're outweighed, and you'll always be outweighed. And this sure. is one of the things that people have to understand is that those of you, especially in the conservative side of things, that think that you're going to make a difference, do you think you're going to make a difference in voting? 60% of the borough works for government. Right. You will always lose the vote. And what was some of the what were some of the things that were said about us when we were voting though? Or I mean when we were running. And why did people think we never ran again? Well they said we were crazy. Well you are. Right, but the establishments the establishments that were for limited government and things of that nature were mm-hmm. the ones that fought us the most. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was the greatest part of all. The conservatives were the ones that were mm-hmm. attacking us more than anything. Well, that's because you have these crazy ideas that somehow nobody should tell you what to do, not even the conservatives. It's funny that uh, 4,000 people, Randy just said, voted for Guy Satley, and now he makes decisions for 90,000? How legitimate is that? Mm, It's more than 90,000, I think, for the borough. Is it? Uh, It's closer to 120 now. (laughs) Wow. I thought everyone was moving out. Oh, they are. I mean, it it, it would have been been higher if we didn't have more people moving out. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Good morning. This is Ben. Ben, go ahead. What's on your mind? Yes. In one mind and out the other, you know. (laughs) Nice. Well, anyway, uh, I'm here to speak and and let you know that that, um, it's all about contract from here on because they took every other right away, um, but they could not take our right to contract away. They've created uh, two dimensions in this world, and that's the straw man. And your your boss, the man in flesh and blood, you know that's what it boils down to. You have uh, this year, you have uh, uh, to choose. You have a right to choose which way you're going to go, and it's going to be very important because this year's the year. Today's the day. Hmm. Choose the right path. You're the boss, hmm. individual. Collective law has no nothing. There's no constitutionality. Uh, no, nothing. Collective law is... Unethical. Un- yes, there you go. Thank you. And I'll just listen over over the air. All right, thanks, Ben. Thanks for the Appreciate call. Appreciate it. 458 Talk is was a, a number. New caller, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. This is Patriot's Lament, and we've cleared the lines. He got it. Yeah, well, and there are an awful lot of people that do get it. The problem is that I'm encountering is people who intellectually get it, but then can't put it into to practice because they've been so accustomed to doing what they're told by the government. Right. How many people call up just in this show and say, well, philosophically, I see where you're coming from, but... But? But? Right. And I think that we've uh, we've examined that and talked about it, and it comes down to the government has told us, and this is the government telling you this, folks. The government has told us over and over and over, the way for you to make effective change is to vote. Get out and vote. Who tells you to vote more than any... Whoops. Sorry about that microphone. Who tells you to vote more than any other person, any other entity, whatever? It's politicians Mm -hmm. and government telling you to vote. This is your way to effect change. Vote, vote, vote. It doesn't matter who you vote for. Just vote. As long as you get out and vote. Right, which... It's their currency. Yeah, think about that. It's their currency. It's where they get their power. I don't care who you vote for, at least vote. What kind of bull crap is that? I mean, there's got to be something a little deeper there. Why do they want you to vote so bad? Because they would recognize, I mean, this goes back to what we were talking they about at the beginning it. of the show, that if they do not have the will of the people, the mandate. if they don't have enough people turning up to say, yes, we want you to rule us, then they recognize that they are illegitimate rulers. Right. They recognize that if they are going on, that they're setting themselves up, it'd be as if Schaefer Cox de- declared the land of, or whatever, Coxlandia, and said, you all now are a part of this land, and I am the supreme ruler, and you will do what I tell you to do. Well, so what if he did? Nobody would do it. 
Nobody would care. Nobody would care. It wouldn't make a difference into anybody's life. If, if somebody went and put on a map Coxlandia and went, oh, look, that's weird. Where did they come off putting that on a map? Right. So the government <coughs> sees what we're blind to. The government sees that it has to have legitimacy by your participation. So it bombards you with vote for us, vote, vote, vote. And then we internalize it and say, well, the only way I can have effectual change in my country, because everyone in the United States says there's something wrong, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone in America, there's something wrong. The only thing that they've been taught, the only way they've been taught that they can make a difference, they can make a change, is to vote. And so that's if, the if only we, thing that gives them legitimacy, which is the only thing that keeps them going, which is the only thing that keeps nothing from changing. So if we go back to our island and you have the the five uh, the five guys that became government, if they allowed um, a vote to happen to decide which one of those five guys uh, had the most power to mandate, and the two guys were the ones that voted on them. Do you think that they would see it as a lot more legitimate because they could change the structure from time to time? Mm-hmm. That would be the whole point. Is that would without it, without would, it, there wouldn't be legitimate. Would they be able to change their status from being taxed and forced to produce and to uh, offer the protection with their physical bodies for uh, for the property? Would they be able to change any of those things? None of those things would change. The structure would stay the same. Well, take it take it out of the the imaginary no matter, island. No matter which one of the five they voted in. Right. Take take it back to the founding the the founding of America. The people who came here, the the pilgrims, the the, the Europeans that came on the ships, they got here. They were basically technically subjects of the king, mm-hmm. right? Yes. But but it didn't really make a difference because they didn't live like they were subjects of the king. They lived like they were subjects of their own self or subjects to God and God and answered to God for their behavior and not to some man. And when the king thought they were getting too uppity, what would the king do? He would send... Send his troops. He would send tax collectors. He would send troops. He would send whatever. And how many hundreds of years before the revolution here in America? We were talking like what? At least... Several. Two hundred. At least 200. At least two when the colonies were getting to be actual colonies instead of just yeah. uh, land grants. And but if you if you look at the hundreds of years uh, in, in which the people here in, in what became America were free mm-hmm. versus and, and the king, you know, sending troops, what would happen to them? They would get, I mean, he sent the tax collectors, they got hung, they got tarred and feathered, they got you run out of town. Yeah, they got shipped back to England quite a few times. Right. People, that guy that called the other day on your show, he said, I understand, I'm tired of voting, I know it doesn't do anything, which that's not really the reason not to vote, whether it does something or not. Right, I've argued. Don't vote because... It can can be very effective, I've argued enough times that it does work, that's why I don't vote. It's quite effective. It's like what Abe was saying earlier, he he chooses not to vote because he doesn't want to go and force someone to do something that they don't want to do. Right, it's not right to do that to people. It's not right to force people to do things. You wouldn't do that in your everyday life, so why do you do it using the political process? So anyways, people people say, that guy in particular, he was saying that, uh, well, what else do I do? And that's our problem, because the government's told us for so long there's nothing that there's you can nothing do. you can do but vote to make effectual change that we've bought into it, and we want to change right now. Yeah. Right now, I want this to be different today. I want this to be different on November 6th, and from that day forward, it's different. Not going to happen, friend. you got to look down the road mm-hmm. years and years, and it starts with taking away your consent and making these guys the illegitimate crapsters that they are, because they are illegitimate, and the people working for them are illegitimate. Okay, can I use our island one more time before the show's over? <laughs> If we get too many people on it, will it tip over? Well, I was going to add more people. Okay. Right now. If you put a military base, it will. <laughs> so. Uh, That's the kind of people we put in I know. office. I can't, what was that congresswoman's <laughs> name who asked yeah, that the question? Congressman. Oh, yeah. Ask the, ask the question. They seriously asked, if we put another base on there, isn't the island going to tip over? Yeah, and he was darn he stinking was dead serious. serious. He was concerned that if they put... 
too many people on Guam that Guam would flip over. And those are the people that you're sending in to Congress to make laws to rule your life. They're so freaking stupid, they don't even know that an island is just a rock that's sticking up out of the water attached to the earth. He thought it was floating out there. And his concern to Admiral whoever it was, or to the Pentagon or someone, that, and this guy... This general, I think it was general or an admiral or whatever, had to actually look him in the face and say, uh, no, actually, it won't flip over. And that guy had to have been thinking, wow, this guy's making laws? This is an uh, island <laughs> that at its widest level is, what, 12 miles from shore to shore? Representative Hank Johnson. And at its smallest level, uh, 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 smallest uh, uh Location, it's uh, seven miles uh, uh, between one shore and the other. Is that correct? Uh, I don't have the exact uh, dimensions, but uh, to your point, sir, I think Guam is a small island. Very Relative small to... island and about 24 miles, if I recall, long. So 20, 24 miles long, about seven miles wide at the least widest uh, place on the island, and about 20, about 12 miles wide uh, uh, on the widest part of the island. This is a congressional hearing. And um, I don't know how many square miles that that is. Do you happen to know? I don't have that. Uh, figure with me, so I can certainly supply it to you. It's 209. Yeah, my my fear is that uh, the whole island will uh, become so overly populated that it will tip over and uh, and capsize. Uh, we don't anticipate that. The uh, the Guam population, I think, currently about 175,000, and again, with 8,000 Marines and their families, it's an addition of about 25,000 uh, more uh, into the population. That's great. Isn't that great? And this is this is the caliber of people that we send to national office he's, to make the decisions He's for still us. a representative, too. I just looked it up. He is still in Congress. The guy Hank thought that, a, that Guam would flip over and capsize, and he's still in Congress. People are still voting for him. You know what? Fine. You guys want to vote? You get go what you deserve. It. Go vote your hearts out. But don't make me <laughs> bound to your decisions. Okay. Right. Why do people get pissed off that we don't vote? I don't understand that. There's a good reason right there on YouTube why one of the reasons why we don't vote because people are <laughs> stupid. And you want to send stupid people to rule over you. But That's Josh, if you don't vote, then your inferior su- people your inferiors will, rule, will over rule over you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> People voted him in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, anyway, I still want to go to the island, dang it. Okay. So right. we're down there on the island again, and if the guy on the right side went over to the guy on the left side, let's say that the guy on the right side, he's been, he's on the bad side of the island. It's getting hit by um, storms really bad. And it's almost going to tip over. Right. He, <laughs> and he gets pretty decimated. So he goes over to the guy on the left side and he decides that he's just going to take whatever he needs to uh, bring himself uh, back up out of poverty from the storms that happened. Nobody would see that as okay, right? They would call that theft. But if the five guys decided, the so-called government, to steal from the guy on the left side because he wasn't hit by storms and give it to the guy on the right side. Are you talking about the island or are you talking about New Orleans? (laughs) No. <laughs> anyway, I'm talking about the island. Oh. Is it okay if it's mandated by a majority to steal from the guy on the left side because he wasn't hit by the storm and give it to the guy on the right side? If we all would accept, and I don't think anybody would call in and say, well, no, the guy on the right side can personally go over there and steal whatever he needs mm-hmm. to get himself back up to par because... He, it wasn't the fruit of his labor. He wasn't the original appropriator of the left side. Davy Crockett would say no. It is not right for him to no, do that. Exactly. You, 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 is it there's Davy nothing Crockett? that would stop I'm, the person on the left side from giving freely. If he wanted to, he could give up his abundance to help the person who's in need. And more than likely, he would. Especially if he was an American. The only time that he gets ticked off about it is when it's stolen from him and given to the other guy. All right, we got all four lines on hold again, Aaron. You, do you want to stay on the island, or do you want to no, take No, no, let's all come right. back. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? 
We need some hello. Hula. Hello, who is this? Hula music. This is Jiminy the Cricket. All right, Jiminy, go ahead. Jiminy. <laughs> hey, uh, first of all, thanks for the uh, show um, uh, for trying to educate us uh, proletariat and um, shaking our worldview. Um, it cracks me up when people call in and want to scold you guys for the show and your beliefs, and uh, even though you're paying for it, but. You have to consider that this is public airway, so we all want our chance, whether you pay for it or not. So. <laughs> that's, that's, that's There's a lot of truth to that statement. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> hey, um, one quick question. Um, what is the deal, you know, the, the, the whole the borough property tax thing? I'm going to start trying to investigate this a little bit myself. I've thought about this, and especially after listening to you crazy guys and stuff, but how come we, you know, we come up with all these things to try to curtail taxes? Why can't we go back to the original um, uh, origination of the property tax within this borough and just try to eliminate it altogether? Now, Does on, anybody- now here, I, I got the answer for you That's right here. Awesome. It's called the Constitution of the State of Alaska. If so you want to, if, yeah. If you want to change it, you got to change the Constitution of the state because it. Um, and oh my goodness, if you have you ever read the Constitution of the State of Alaska? No, it's oh, too communist for me. It, it is a it is a socialist document. Like you wouldn't. I, it's like Che freaking Guevara wrote this thing, man. Aye, aye, aye. You, you've got to read it because it, it's basically it asserts. You, you talked about the, the public ownership of the air. It basically asserts public ownership over everything. In the state of Alaska, not just the oil well. We asked the question when we were running for borough assembly when the tax cap was coming up. I asked, even at the uh, forum or whatever, I would constantly ask people, why are we putting the tax cap in, back in at 12 mils or whatever it is? Why aren't we lowering it every year? And I just got looked at cross-eyed like, what? They actually have tried that before, <laughs> and it failed. When they tried it, it failed because the the people here get so much money off of that just that three percent raise every single year allows them to increase their budget enough to give more of their friends jobs, and there are enough people benefiting from it that it would never it would right, never that's pass. Why there are enough would, people benefiting. That's why from, we would never get elected onto the borough because we ran on no property right, taxes. Right, exactly. Pure property rights, no property taxes, blah, blah, blah. Get rid of the borough, which right. for some reason it, they... The, uh, the it, funny thing is that people have been too conditioned, brainwashed by the system yes. that they can't think out of the box. They can't see past the system that we've been, been ingrained into every one of us. Well, at yeah. least they can see where we're coming from from a philosophical level. <laughs> yeah. Hey, no, no. Have, have you ever, <laughs> caller, have you have you ever, have you ever read the book Brave New World? Uh, no, no. All right. Uh, have you ever read it, Josh? Is that like a whole new world? No, no. It's, it's not Disney. Uh, oh. Brave New World, Aldous Huxley. I only Huxley. watch Disney movies. I'm it, sorry. it is worth the read because I guarantee you, as you're reading it, you're going to say, oh, my goodness, this is happening. Now it was written in the 1930s. Crazy. Okay? Basically, yeah, it, it envisions a society in which the children are not raised by parents. They're raised by the state. And every night the children go to sleep with a, a, a voice under their pillow telling them that they're, who they're going to be. Because the government has decided which which genetics are best for which job, and oh, that's, and, and and you're going to be a part of this job, and you're going to be the and so every that's night called they, public school. They exactly every night they go to sleep with this with, to the sound of this voice telling them who they're going to be and what they should believe, and the person who comes in from the outside of that system, who had never been a part of that brainwashing, is the only one who's even capable of challenging the thinking. Mm-hmm. And and I don't want to spoil the book for you, but he's not successful. By the way, he he does he does not succeed. We're actually going to have a guy on the 20th, uh, Bob Murphy, and he's going to delve into quite well private society and stateless societies and how it really can work and really bend our minds. So definitely tune Excellent. in on the 20th because it's going to be sweet. And for anyone listening that knows who Lou Rockwell is, I found out today that he has agreed to come on the show, too. Oh, Ooh. wow. That's going to be oh, awesome. Oh, snap. All right. Let's see if we can uh, squeeze in a call or two more before call, we're done. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning. Who's this? That was our conscience that just called. Are you still there? Yeah, Jiminy Jim Cricket. Cricket. All right. That person's not answering, so let's go to the next one. Good morning. Are you still there? Hello. Hey, who is this? This is Gloria. Gloria, thanks for calling in. What's on your mind? Well, uh, I called, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, and I asked... Uh, because I like the way you're making us think. But uh, so I asked, what what can we do besides where we are? And then and, and all I got was answers that, 
well, don't you know that this is this and this is that, which was the same as what you'd been saying. But I was listening to Coast to Coast the other night, and maybe you've heard of the program already, because I did hear somebody call in one time this week to ask about it. But it was about UN Agenda 21. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do you have very much information on that? I don't know. I mean, I can't word for word speak of it, but I know what it is. I know the borough well, I know the the borough 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 signed on to yes. it, yeah. Well, it bypasses everything what you're doing and uh, in a way. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, the, 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 this pro-constitution, that, that is not pro-constitution, but the person that was the, promoting the exposition of it, um, exposing it was, um, you know, pro-Constitution and so forth. Then she, it was a Democrat, <laughs> and she had formed this thing, Democrats Against Agenda 21. And who she was, was her name was Rosa Corey, and she's a forensic uh, realtor in the San Francisco area, and she does a lot of, I guess, underground um, examination of the properties and so forth. And in her um, work on that, she found a lot of fraud. And and a- as she was uh, investigating further on that, she came across um, a realization of Agenda 21, the UN Agenda 21, 1992. And H.W. Uh, Bush signed that for us in, ni- in 1992. And which is a UN agenda, which is all the people that went there, almost all except one person, William Jasper, who was a John Birch Society person, a correspondent, uh, were um, Marxists, communists, or socialists mm-hmm. from all the different countries. And I mean, this woke her up to a way to the point that uh, she's developed. Um, she spent for a year and a half of going around the country telling people, and she has a book called um, the green, Behind the Green Mask, and uh, in the back 11 pages, she tells you what to do, and she says, make copies of this and get them to all your neighbors, whatever, because if they work on, or if we work against this Agenda 21, we are in the process going to be more aware of the Constitution and understanding it and what we need to do to keep this thing. This is like a python that's around our legs, and it's up to our lungs, ready to squeeze our life's blood out of it. It's been subtly developing, organizing for 20 years. And what they do is they want soft law and regionalization. And this is the Delphi technique. Uh, These are all terms, a soft uh, growth, uh, uh, right. The grid, you know, smart grid, yep, so, and so forth. All mm-hmm. these, ter- a lot of terminology, sustainability. Mm-hmm. So, isn't the best answer to educate, though? Isn't that what the the gal's advocating for? Well, yes, so. but uh, but not just that. Once you uh, can recognize these people in government, because a lot of federal sons, the, the gov- federal government is totally, totally involved in it, and NDAA and the Patriot Act. That's all part of it. Um, we're, we're out of time today. Uh, it, is, is there a website people can look yes, up? Yes, I gave you them. Uh, postsustainabilityinstitute.org. Um, uh, and Democrats uh, Against the uh, Agenda 21. Yes. All right. Cool. We're, thank Thanks you for very much, Gloria. Good stuff. Uh, if folks want to contact the show, patriotslament.blogspot.com or patriotslament at gmail.com. And YouTube is uh, Radio Free Fairbanks. All right. And we'll be back again. We'll post all the shows on there. Next week with the Saturday morning wake up call at 9 a.m.